Hello again. We're going to start a series of lessons on right triangle trigonometry. And the first thing that we're going to do is explore a 45-45-90 triangle. It's actually pretty cool and pretty interesting. Uh, trig in terms of trig, uh, trig functions or trig anometric functions, pardon me, I have to say that one slowly, didn't really become uh, big in uh, the Western world until about like the 15th century. Uh, basically when they found that they could have uses for it, uh, particularly navigation, because at that time uh, the Western world was expanding as it were to the new continent. Uh, they found that there were applications for this sort of mathematics that helped them, uh, like I said, especially navigation. But it's actually pretty interesting because if you look back in the Islamic world or uh, Chinese world, just to name a couple, uh, they were having um, applications of trig you know, by the 10th century. So it's pretty cool and it's something that got accepted and became very useful, especially when you worked with uh, any form of right triangles when you were trying to find ratios, proportions, angles of descent, etc. Well, that, this is going to be an introduction. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a 45, 45, 90. I'm going to try to prove that to you. And we'll just use the fundamental knowledge and just keep building and building and building and building. So this is the first of many. Well, maybe it's the first of many. We'll see. So I've got this uh, square right here. Pretty typical shape. And it's a square because all four sides are similar. I'm not similar. They're the same. And that's noted by these lines right here. If each one has a line, it just means that they're all the same length. I know it's not drawn perfectly, but I did my best. And this purple little dash mark here means that it's a right angle. Now, we're talking about right triangle trigonometry here. So how do I get a triangle from a square? And that's a problem that was posed many times over and over again. Most people solved it. Uh, not everybody gets it, but I'll go ahead and show you. But first, uh, I'm going to ask a very simple question. I want to create a length for each side of the square. I want to make it, you know, relatively easy and pleasant. So what's the easiest length for a square I can use? And the answer is 1. So I'm going to assume that the length of each side of this square is 1. Now that's very important, especially when I start working with right triangle trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make a triangle from a square. And how I do that is I partition the square. I, you know, basically cut the square in half. And I'll show you how I do that. Like that. So I'm going to create a triangle. Now I'm only going to work with... this side of the figure. Now each side is 1. Okay, so that means that this side and this side are 1. And I want to figure out what this side is equal to. Now I know the angles of what I'm working with, and basically what that means is that this is a 90 degree angle, and when I cut the square in half, like that, I basically cut the angle. Well, I mean basically I cut the angles in half. So each one here is 45. So I've got this triangle, That's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And I'm going to note it like this, where one of the side, one of the legs is one, the other leg is one. And now I want to figure out the hypotenuse of this triangle. So how do I do that? I use the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse, the longest side, is always c squared. So I've got this a squared plus b squared equals c squared problem. I only use this formula in a right triangle. This is a right triangle because it's got a degree, or it's got an angle, pardon me, of 90 degrees. So the two smaller sides are A and B, and it doesn't really matter which one you put it in, but the C has to be the longest side. The side opposite is 90 degree problem. So we do that. And if 1 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. 1 squared is 1, plus 1 squared is 1 equals C squared, so 2 equals C squared. Now, in order to figure out what C is, I take the square root of both sides, and I get C equals square root 2. So this side is equal to the square root of 2. So on a 45, 45, 90 triangle, both legs are equal to 1, and the longest side is the square root of 2. Now, what's really interesting is if we use this in the general case, it doesn't really always work that way, because not every triangle that's 45, 45, 90 will have, you know, 1, 1, and square root 2. What I'll have instead is this, and we have to use it for all types of cases. So I'm going to draw another 45, 45, 90 triangle. Except I'll put it this way, put a little bit of pizzazz here. This means that these sides are congruent, that they're the same. This means that it's a 90 degree triangle, which means if these sides are the same, that's 90 degrees. That means that this one has to be 45 degrees, that one has to be 45 degrees. Same angle measure, 
causes the same side, the same length inside, pardon me. I'm going to go ahead and write that anyways. 45, 45, 90. Now both legs are equal to 1. Biggest side is equal to square root 2. How do we write it in the general sense? Well, instead of calling it 1, let's call it a variable. And the variable that we always use that seems to be the most popular is x. So what you're basically going to do is replace every one that you see with an x. So this is x, this is x, and this is root 2. Now somebody's going to say, well, there's no 1 here. Yeah, there is, actually. It's 1 times the square root of 2, so it's actually x root 2. So when we're trying to figure out a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we're going to use this information right here. Pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and show you a 30, 60, 90 triangle next. But I'm going to go ahead and write this down for reference later on. When we do uh, sine, cosine, wow, well, I don't want to get too far into it right now. Let's just do the 30, 60, 90, and then we'll work with the trig functions afterwards. So for right now, I hope that's helpful. Have a good day. Goodbye.